So, does it work? That's what we're going to find out. We're back to wiring, um, and if you can get someone to do it for you, pay them, honestly. Um, so basically, obviously I'm making a standalone ECU um, loom for the Fabia VRS ECU. So at the moment I've got an interior loom, so to speak, which is basically your accelerator pedal, um, your clutch and your brake switch. We've then got kind of an intermediate bit of loom, which is basically is the bit that plugs into your ECU and kind of connects to the other bits on here. We've got then the other section of the ECU, which is the power section, which is here. And then obviously the engine loom side, which you don't really touch. Um, but obviously for that to work, you need all of these as well. So first things first was to look for a hole to pass a load of wiring through the bulkhead. And luckily on the A1, there is a hole behind the ABS motor, a small grommet. It's about a 10, 20 mil grommet. Pop that out and then I've just gone through the cone cutter and opened that out to 35 mil. And um, that's enough to put a loom through with a new grommet. Um, so that's going to be the plan. Now there is what I've realised looking at the wiring diagrams that you need to touch upon. Um, the clutch and the brake switch on the A1 is actually on the master cylinder and not on the pedals themselves. However, I think I need separate clutch and brake switches because I'm leaving the A1 ECU in because I think that will work the ABS. Um, so I don't want to chop into those um, switches because um, I don't know if it will cause confusion between the two ECUs of passing power different ways and stuff so I kind of need to put the Fabio VRS ones back on the pedals however normally the pedal box doesn't have any facilities to do so so I'm gonna have to make up some sort of bracket for that that's something I'm gonna do at a later date because as long as it starts and runs I know that this is working and um, the only thing with the clutch switch if that's not actually detecting the clutch being off or on and um, that will hang revs between gear changes so it could be a bonus in some some ways but obviously I kind of want it all working so we'll need to make a bracket at one point. Off camera I've kind of finished the loom up which is the Fabio VRS loom now I've made that standalone completely so it just runs the engine doesn't connect to the Audi in any other way other than obviously controlling the fuel pump and switch live powers and earths um, and I can confirm that the engine does run, um, it does start off and it does run. So before we go and have a quick look at the car, I'm going to confirm what did and what didn't work. And the list for what didn't work is quite a bit longer. So obviously I did the standalone loom um, and then I looked at making a trigger wheel because I was having issues with the power steering working um, and kind of the ignition. Now the Audi A1 kind of has a weird, if it doesn't sense it cranking, it will cut the ignition quickly. So that was one thing I needed to address and I needed to address that with a push to start button. So that was wired in um, because it wasn't resolved with the trigger wheel and I'll explain why in a minute. But basically I put a, a push to start button in. So I took out the start relays uh, from the fuse box on the driver's side, uh, the relay box shall I say. Um, and there's a violet and black wire going to, to one of the relays. You've got relay one and relay two for starter. And you've got the out that goes to start mode, which is a red and a white wire. And it was basically used those wires to a 50 amp push to start switch, which is one of these really awful looking fast and furious kind of light up as you press it buttons. Um, but that meant that obviously um, I could override the Audi controlling the ECU and doing a cut on it. Because out of five times of trying to crank it, three of those times it just wouldn't start. It, it wasn't cranking long enough. Um, but all starts perfectly well now. So that was how we got around the ignition side of it. Now, the power steering, I made the trigger wheel for, um, and that was basically using the oil seal um, trigger wheel, along with the sensor for that, making a bracket, and then remote mounting it, because it was too small to fit on the crank itself. Um, I remote mounted it to <coughs> um, the uh, unused, basically, power steering, uh, sorry, uh, AC pump. Um, mounted it to that and it gave me the rev counter but the Audi A1 again was really too clever so it, I think it was because it wasn't picking up a cam signal it would allow the rev counter to work which would allow power steering to work the rev counter annoyingly was erratic so it wasn't giving me a proper RPM um, which potentially was interference but I think it needed another signal for it um, and that would cut out the power steering and the ignition once it sensed it wasn't working after a I, I estimate around a minute, basically enough to get me down the road and my power steering cut out. So couldn't do that, it was unsafe. Um, so I brought the vehicle back and thought, no, I've got to look into that. Figured out I could control the power steering by the Fabia ECU. Um, so that was absolutely awesome. Um, and the way I got around that and did the Fabia side was 
Well, originally I tried connecting the canvas to it, um, to the canvas that was there, because I, I was told that um, EDC 15, which is the Fabio ECU, and EDC 16 would speak. This was to each other. This is by kind of a well regarded tuner. Um, but yeah, it didn't, unfortunately. I wish it had. Um, again, it did the same thing when connecting it. The, I got the erratic kind of um, rev counter again, but it then cut out afterwards. So it didn't work. But what I did do was removed and insulated the canvas wires that went to the um, power steering pump. Now, they're the original Audi A1 ones. Just cut those. So it's the orange wires, if you're looking at them. It's the orange and black and the orange and brown. They're usually twisted. And it gets to one of the plugs. It's got three wires, I think it's a four pin plug with three wires in. Uh, one of those wires is a switch 12 volt, you leave that one. Um, and then the canvas wires, you come back a bit because you obviously need to be able to solder new wires onto it. Cut those and then where the, it's the Audi loom, insulate the ends of those so they can't kind of touch anything and tape those back up. Um, and leave those because they're still going to be running CAN signals. So you want to make sure they're not going to interfere with anything. And then the two wires that go out to the plug, you then wire that into the Fabia canvas side. So anywhere you've got a bit of canvas, you just extend the wire in. Now that's if you've cut it out like me, but obviously if you're clever about this and have watched these videos first, you would leave the canvas wires that would originally go to the Fabia um, power steering pump. Um, so then the other plug that's on the power steering is just basically a uh, power and an earth, obviously you just leave those for the A1 side because they just go to a fuse box. And the switch live is fine to leave um, for the A1. So you're only messing with the canvas wires on that. And again, purely you don't want that connected to the Audi A1. You just want the canvas connected to the uh, Fabio ECU. So on the Fabio side, you only really have the canvas going to the power steering and you only have the canvas going to the um, OBD port which is a separate one for the Fabia. Um, so I've run two ODD ports. One is the engine management one, and I've located that now in the glove box. And then obviously the A1 is in the original area. In case any faults come up with kind of windows, lights and stuff, I can still read that. And then if any engine management faults come up, I can read the one in the glove box, which is obviously the Fabia. Um, the other thing I don't have, so obviously at the moment I don't have a rev counter. Um, you could have an aftermarket one put in. Um, if you wanted to, <coughs> there are plenty of diesel ones around. Um, and the gauges on the dash of the Audi A1, basically I, I have obviously all the warning signals. I've wired in a separate, um, what do you call it? A separate oil pressure switch. Now the Fabia one, again, works through the clocks and it's very weird. It's not a normal one. It's not an earth switch. It basically is, isn't is earthed and then it sort of semi-earths and gives resistances to kind of turn the clock on so again I can't really get around that it may be a way of doing it with the A1 one the way I've done that is I've put a Ford uh, I think it's Ford Focus one basically it's a normally closed switch and it's an M10 by one thread so you screw that in and you replace the wire so you just basically the Fabio wire you change the end to a spade connection because obviously that's how it is on the Fords and you plug that in and then the other wire you put to one side of an LED and then the other side to the LED you put to your switch 12 volts. And what that does is when you put the ignition in, turn your ignition to basically the ignition, the second setting, that will light up. And then as soon as, in my case, I do the push to start, as soon as it senses oil pressure, that light will go out. So what will happen is if you lost oil pressure while you're driving, that will illuminate. So that's how I've got around that. Um, so we've obviously got a button for that. And then the temperature, I run a separate temperature gauge. So I've just put in a kind of an aluminium bit in the top hose and I run a temperature gauge off of that to an aftermarket kind of um, gauge. And I've put that in the dash. So you can run, if you want to run it off OBD, you can. You can connect an OBD um, gauge to your something like a scan gauge or um kind of think aem do a cool gauge which will read kind of all your oil pressures all your um rev counter it would work that as well um obviously your oil temperature your oil your water temperature and um, egts you can get gauges that do that and they'll plug into the fabia side so instead of running all these extra wires like i've done manually um you could just do that and have a, a kind of a smart gauge in your center console or wherever you want it um, so that's a way of getting around that. 
Um, I can confirm at this point the drive shafts work. So Fabio drive shafts don't need spacers, they just go in um, and it works really well. So I can also confirm that the ABS works. Now I've tried it yesterday by doing a bit of driving and stamping on the brakes. And as soon as the wheel is locked, you've got the ABS pedal feel through the uh, pedal itself. So that works. And also I can kind of confirm that by connecting to the Audi side with the ABD reader and uh, triggering an ABS for obviously when you're coming to bleed the brakes and stuff, you need to bleed that through. So that works really well. Also the speedometer works. So it tells you kind of what speed you're doing, the Audi controls that. I assume again, through the ABS, it gets that measurement. Um, but yeah, obviously with that, you've got the benefit of the mileage actually correctly working as well. So every mile you do, obviously that goes up as well. So yeah, those are kind of um, things that I was kind of dubious about, thought it would work and has worked. So that's a bonus. And also some conversions when you're messing around with canvas, you can have issues like I'm having with the RPM gauge and you can sometimes have issues with the uh, fuel gauge. So all kind of the Lupo conversion that I've done in the past, the, the RAV count has worked fine, but it's been the opposite that the fuel gauge has worked a bit funny. Um, but on this, no, it's perfectly fine. That works nice and smooth and, and does give a correct reading. So those are obviously added bonuses, things you don't need to mess with. Other than it being a normal Audi and I'm having all the warning dash lights in the world because obviously the A1's not seeing any of the engine. Um, it works really, really well. Um, it goes really well. Um, yeah, it doesn't really need anything other than what I've addressed. So as long as you amend the power steering, um, the charging, it needs a Fabia charger. Um, so it's one wire out of the ECU. Now, originally on the uh, Fabia, the ECU would have one wire that goes to the alternator and then there's another wire that goes back into the car to the clocks for the charge light. Now, I can confirm that the charge light doesn't, you don't need to wire in any lights to get it to excite. The ECU does it itself. So you only need one of the two wires going to the alternator. It doesn't matter which alternator you use. So you can use the A11, which is what I've done which is a hundred and, it's either 140 amp or 120, um, or you can fit the Fabio one on, which is a 90, 90 amp. Um, but yeah, as long as you've got that one wire going to it from the Fabio ECU, and you don't use the A11, um, then basically as soon as it hits so many revs, so you just rev the car, it will kick in, it will start charging, it will get you to kind of 13.5 um, voltage as it's charging. So that's a quick way, a simple way of testing it. But yeah, that's basically how I worked. It did, I originally thought the A1 would do it, but it doesn't. As soon as it realises it's not cranking, even if you have the trigger wheel connected, um, it basically cuts out charging. So it will cut out your power steering, cut out your charging, and it also cuts out your ignition. So that's kind of why I've had to go around that, um, but it's dead simple. So those are the only things you need to address. Um, for those of you who can't keep up, you've got to address your power steering, your alternator charging wire, and obviously just override your ignition. That's kind of all you need to do. Um, the only other thing is, obviously you're not gonna be using the fuel pump relay. So you can also take that out um, and you can just wire the fuel pump relay from the Fabio side, because obviously you've got a relay there, to the wire to the fuel pump um, in the relay section. So I just normally take the relay backs out and just connect into the back of there and just don't bother putting the relays back in on the A1 side. But yeah, let's go and have a look at the car. I've probably bored you to death if you're watching it as a video, but if you're watching this as you need to follow along, and hopefully I've followed, um, I've given you all the information you kind of need to know, spout out as basic as you can. But yeah, let's go and have a look at the car. We're going to see it starting, whatnot. Um, I'm not going to do any driving videos because I can't be bothered, um, but I'll do a clip to show you kind of the, the gauges that work and whatnot. So yeah, let's go. As an afterthought doing the video, I realised I didn't touch upon the subject of cooling. Now, the radiator I'm using is a Fabia VRS one. And the reason being is I was going to use the Audi A1, but then realised they don't do a race spec thicker 
radiator for either the S1 or the A1 in aluminium. So I've gone with the Fabio VRS one. I've made some mounts to mount it into the front end and it's basically in, it fits perfectly and I can get a bigger cooling radiator. So with that in place, um, it then comes on to fan wiring. Um, with any radiator you use, if you're gonna put the A1 back in, you'll realize that the A1 um, potentially isn't gonna work, um, as in the fans potentially won't work because the ECU, I believe, controls the fans and it picks up temperature from somewhere else, not the radiator itself. So you've got to kind of wire in a manual switch to some degree somewhere. So for me, VRS one, I'll put the VRS one, uh, VRS radiator in, but instead of using the VRS fan switch because it's dual speed, I've used this fan switch which part will be here, that screws into the radiator and then what you'll find on the Audi A1 is that there's a plug dangling for the fans and that has a permanent 12 volt and a kind of a permanent earth in it. So what you want to do is run the permanent 12 volt directly to the positive side of your fan, which in my case is two 12 inch race fans. So both of those have just got the positive directly to those. And then the earth goes to the fan switch, a two pin fan switch, which obviously the partner I've just shown you. Um, so the earth goes to one side of that switch and then from out of that switch goes directly to the fan. And what will happen is when the radiator temperature gets up to specification to trigger the switch, that will basically put a link in there and it will turn the fans on full power. And then when it cools down, it will break the link and turn the fans off. Now it's as basic as you can get you'll find that the power that's dangling on the plug on your A1 currently um, is already fused by the main fuse box in the engine bay, so it's good to go. That is how I've run the fans in mine and kind of the idea of how you would run the fans in yours. So on that note, I'm gonna leave the videos here. If you've got any questions with regards to this particular conversion um, or any comments, please drop them below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, but that's it. Um, just wanna thank you for watching and uh, take care of yourselves.